So this is a long time overdue. Been meaning to do this for probably about six, seven months. Uh, I have never done a walkthrough video, so it's time that it's we're due to get one done. So today we're going to walk around and show you our my 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan Overland build. So when I built this vehicle and I started this, I originally was going to uh, lower it and airbag it, but I decided, why do I want to airbag something that has all-wheel drive and capabilities of going off-road? So uh, my thought process and vision completely did a complete 180 from low and slow, your typical Volkswagen, to what you see today that's still not finished out. Um, I didn't know it was going to be this big when I started it. I didn't think it was going to be this big as I got through it, but it continues to grow. It keeps getting bigger and I hope that it only gets bigger. So that way I get more people influenced into doing what I'm doing. Um, so let's uh, get into the build a little bit and let's talk about this. So to start off, I custom designed with wrap stock, a, uh, a vinyl wrap. I didn't want something that everybody else had done, everybody's been doing, they're doing a topographical, they're doing your standard traditional camouflage. Um, they see they're a flat, all black color or a light color, and I just didn't want that. I'm a fan of camouflage, so I wanted something unique. I wanted something that not everybody's gonna be doing. And so talking to them about doing some sort of camouflage, but it's gonna stand out, give it a little bit of that um, the carbon fiber look, but not true carbon fiber because Everybody goes carbon fiber. So we came up with this design, which we call the liquid camo. So as you get closer to the wrap, you'll see that it's got more of your non-traditional camouflage, but it looks like it's kind of ripping away from the vehicle a little bit, charading it, as you would say. Uh, it kind of gives it that torn look. It gives you that worn look and it always looks dirty. So no matter how dirty the vehicle gets, I can wash it off and I'll spend hours trying to clean it because I think I'm seeing dirt spots. So it's definitely a nice, unique feel to it. And it's definitely one completely off. Nobody else has done it yet. It's never been on a vehicle. It is offered on wrap stock now, um, but I still have yet to see any information or any pictures or any videos of anybody having this unique design. So I'm content with it. And I've always been a big fan of these KO2s. So these are the BFG Goodrich KO2s. Um, and these are a 245-65 R17, because I do have a 17-inch wheel. So speaking of wheel, we have these badass friggin' race line arrows. These are a 17-inch, they're in a 8.5, and they're an offset of 45. Um, in order for me to run these, I am having to run a adapter. It's a hub adapter, 19 millimeter spacer, hub adapter combination that gives me the bolt pattern of a 5x114. 0.5, which is a Jeep wheel bolt pattern. I veered away from the typical VW bolt pattern, which is a five by one, five by one, one, two. And there's just no options out there. If there is, it's very minimal and everybody has it. I wanted something unique. I wanted something different that not everybody's gonna be running on a Volkswagen. So we partnered up with Raceline and they said, we'd love you to run these. I wasn't too sure about them at first, but the more I see them, the more I'm just like, I'm content, I'm happy, I think they look awesome on here. All right, so as you get closer, you can see that we not only do we partner up with Raceline, but we also partner up with Power Tanks. Right now, we are running a prototype monster valve. This monster valve is super fast. So instead of having to pull the needle out to air down, instead of having to push the needle in, instead of using your typical, your Power Tank adapters to fill up and air down, these bad boys allow you to basically pull this valve that's right here out and it literally just dumps the air out. I can literally air down from generally running 40 PSI, depending on the season, down to about 15, 25 PSI in like two seconds. It's ridiculously fast. And then it also gives me the ability to pull this cap off and I'm able to fill up so much quicker than what it is with the valve. So I just run my gauge here so I can see what my pressure is and I fill up here and I'm done. I can literally air up and air down in a matter of minutes. So super happy with that, super impressed with these. 
I would love the product that Power Tank comes out with and we'll continue to rock them. So as you see, I have the Rider Rack Sunseeker awning on here. Uh, this is so I have a little bit of added protection and shade when um, we're in high, high temps, lots of sun and no break away from the shade. Um, this thing is awesome. It's a little dated. It's been out for a while, but I love it. Hopefully here soon I can do a 360 style series awning. But for the time being, Rhino Rack comes in clutch with their Sunseeker awning. Um, fixed, to the, fixed to the Tiguan, you can see I have all my rooftop tents. I have my lights. I have the Rhino Rack awning on here. What I have is I have the Rhino Rack Pioneer platform system. This allows me to run their, Pioneer, their Rhino Rack feet and marry it to my stock rails for the Tiguan. Um, and then it allows me to attach my platform to the Tiguan. This platform is absolutely clutch. It is probably the most stout frame that I've seen out there. There are other competitions out there that are pretty damn good. Uh, but I really think Rhino Rack comes in clutch with their platform system, the easy use and ability to add additional components to it. I want to be able to have the option to run certain lights or in certain situations. Um, Rigid came in clutch with these 360 lens covers or six inch lens covers for the 360s. They're simple snap on. All I'm going to do is lock it on the place, slide it on, we're latched on. I now have amber lights. So absolutely love the ability to change that out and have that feature um, during um, intense weather situations, high foggy visit, high foggy situations, or even if I'm out in the field and at nighttime or we're tackling on obstacles or on the trail at nighttime, Amber does a great job of highlighting what you're coming up against and what you're driving over so you have a better idea of feel of the terrain versus bright lights. It just it shadows everything and it makes it difficult to see. So we have a rigid 360 series, amber and clear, fog lights on the front. On the top, you can see I've got the rigid adapt series. They're the 40 inch LED light bars. They are full RGB. They give me the capabilities to adjust my focal beam as needed, um, depending on the situation I am. So I can actually go and adjust from being a spot to a spot flood combo or just pure flood. Um, I love that feature because there's certain situations where I want to have the ability to fine tune my lights versus just having either one or the other or a combination of both. I want to have that fine tune. Um, they do have the capabilities of running GPS. But when we're out doing overlanding, how often are you gonna run GPS because your speeds are always usually slower on the trails. I'm obviously not gonna be out Baja and doing any uh, Baja 500 type stuff. So I don't need it to adjust based on my GPS speed as far as for how fast I'm going or I'm slow. And I just wanna be able to adjust it on my own. So uh, the Adapt Series are definitely for the win. Uh, color durations, I can do anywhere from green, purple, red, um, I can do blue, I can do violet, I can all different colors. I have it preset to red and green because they're two of my favorite colors and the green really capitalizes on the color scheme of the TIG one. So I looked at several different rooftop tent systems. Um, I wanted to have the capabilities of having a pop-up versus a fold-over because some of the fold-overs are just way too big and bulky. So what I decided is I looked at the Go FSR, the Evo 49 series, that's their evolution series. And I kind of fell in love with it because A, it's low profile, um, B, it pops straight up, and C, I have the ability to run additional accessories, as you can see. Um, I can run additional accessories on the rails of it, which eliminates having the need to put so much on the actual Pioneer platform, which causes things to be lower and in the way. So by, able, by doing so, I was able to mount my Casey action track recovery boards to it. It's got the capabilities of carrying all four, which is about 75 to 80 pounds for all four of them. Um, the cool feature about my GoFSR tent is when I'm going to elevate it up and lock it in position to deploy it, I've got two locks that lock onto the gas struts that allow it to hold in position so that way it never collapses on me. It actually also helps to keep the tent from collapsing in high wind situations. It already has a high wind rating, but this just gives me that, that security of knowing when me and my dog are in there sleeping at night and we're in a massive storm like I have in the past, I don't have to stand there and hold it up and pray that it's not gonna drop down on me. Um, I absolutely love my GoFSR tent. It's got superb amount of ventilations. It's got great windows. Bruno can look out all four corners, depending on what side he wants to look at. And at night, it holds up extremely well to body heat. 
and it does give me the capabilities of running a heater, which I do not have, it's too warm for that, but it allows me to run a diesel, pro, a diesel heater and it keeps it nice and warm, sometimes too warm, but I have that ability to do so without having to make any modifications to the tent itself. Back side of the Tiguan, nothing too fancy, nothing too flashy. Um, on the back side, I do have my rigid Chase Series pod lights. <coughs> these are a great combination. I have the ability to run trail lights because these are amber, so I run a trail light at night. I do have the backup light when I wanna do the backup light. I also have strobe set up on there, so in case of a chase situation or emergency situation, I can turn the strobes on. It'll strobe back and forth and let people know that from a distance they can see me, you know, before they decide they're gonna run into me unless they're not paying attention. And it's great for chasing out on the field in low light situations when you're trying to get that amazing aerial shot. So um, always good to have a little extra light in the back, especially when you want visibility backing up. So let's talk about the good stuff. So when I first started thinking about the build, I reached out to several different companies to see who had a kit that would give me the ability to lift this or at least level it. I found two companies. One company, it's a great product. Um, I'm just not a fan of your rough country, polyurethane components and products because after a time they break down and then you get a lot of slop, you get a lot of movement and just things go south real fast. So I contacted Berg Performance out of Colorado and these guys are absolutely amazing. They did a lot of work for me for my 2016 Jetta. I know, complete opposite, go from a low low and slow, or low and fast Tiguan or Jetta to a beefed up lifted Tiguan, who would have thunk? Um, so I reached out to those guys. I said, hey, I'm buying this 21 Tiguan. I wanna go overland with it. Do you have anybody in mind that could potentially fab up or has a lift for it? They pointed me to B2B Fab out of Delaware. And I'm gonna tell you what, when it comes to them knowing products and knowing the Volkswagens and knowing the Audis, these guys know their shit. Um, Arno is absolutely amazing. He's a wizard. So Arno goes, hey, we've got a great product. We've got our B2B Fab camber correcting lift kit. It is a lift kit slash leveling kit and it allows your Tiguan to be lifted and it puts everything back into geometry so you don't have to do any kind of uh, a, alignments or camber correction on it because it's already built into the system that they have. So we installed their camber correcting lift kit. So it was an inch and a half all together all around, level everything out. To complement that in the back, we actually added the Atlas shocks. So the Atlas shocks are bigger. They're a little bit longer. So it allows me to articulate a little bit more and have a little more travel so I can get better traction. Obviously we're limited with it, but what I do get with it I'm hands down, I have no complaints. This thing still still impresses me every time I go out. Um, because of all the weight, with everything that's loaded in here, I sag quite a bit. So we added the Firestone airbags that go in the back. Um, they sit between the coil springs in the center. And so when I'm heavily loaded down, all I have to do is air up, it'll level me back out and we're good to go. To complement everything so I get better handling, better travel with it, we also have some prototype uh, sway bar end links that we've upgraded. They're bigger, they're bulkier, and they're adjustable. Um, so we've got those in the back. On the front, we've got the same setup. We've got the camera correcting adjustment spacer kit on it. We also have their brand new, um, it's been out for a little while, but we upgraded the front sway bar end links. Those things are absolutely amazing. We're talking going from a finger size to almost two fingers and it, it's incredible. It's about an inch wide in diameter. So huge upgrade as far as that goes. On the bottom side, we got rid of the muffler and we did their Tiggy pipe. So by eliminating the muffler, we're using the factory resonators, just extending the pipe out. It gives it a great sound. It's not too loud. It's not too quiet. It's perfect and it's not annoying. A little drony on the inside, but a little bit of uh, insulation on the inside. We can probably correct that. Um, in the engine compartment, we have gone ahead and we've done the APR stage one, stage two tune on it. We have Loop Technic cold air intake on it. And then we also have um, DV, DBS diverter valve rebuild kit. So we rebuilt the, um, the diverter valve. It's got a bigger spring in it, heavier duty for a faster withdrawal. Um, it also allows the turbo to breathe the way it's supposed to breathe and less chances of it getting stuck. 
and you're getting rid of that stock diaphragm, which causes your diverter valve to fail. So we went ahead and we upgraded the diverter valve internals and built that out. Gives a nice, unique little kind of little blow off sound. Nothing too crazy. It's not nitrous out. I don't need all that, you know, fast and furious garbage. Um, so it gives a nice, unique sound to it. And it kind of sounds cool when it does release. So a lot of you guys are probably asking, what's, what's stopping you? How are you stopping with all this extra weight? Well, we partnered up with Power Stop Brakes. We have their ported and slotted disc brakes in the front and in the rear. We also have their Evolution Series brake pads, which are absolutely amazing. I cannot begin to express how impressed I am with these brakes. Um, whereas before, without these things, I was a real hesitant on a lot of different trains. I was extremely nervous driving down the roads because I had to really slam on the brakes to get these into stops. I don't have to worry about that no more with power stop brakes. With power stop brakes behind the wheels of these Tiguans and backing me up, I've got all the care, all the trust in the world. I know they got me, I got them. Pretty sure that covers everything we have on the Tiguan. So everything that we've covered and everything talked about is what transformed this bad boy into what it is today. So you guys seen it before when it was stock, you see it now, you see it on the trails. I can't thank you yet enough for you guys who do follow me. I want to say thank you to you guys who do, because without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Um, but you'll see me out there more. You'll see me out there on the ventures, and hopefully I'll meet up with some of you guys on the trails when you guys are out on your adventures too.